I got something really cool to show you today, but you just, you just gotta see it. Hold on a second. Here we go. A6000 GTI. It is a beast. Look at that. All right, guys, just for you, we got the big JBL A6000 Crown Edition on the dyno. 6,000 watts. Now, who did this? Somebody's just trying to be a tease. What's up, guys? BD Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. Didn't mean to tease you too much there with that little intro. Okay, maybe I did. Trust me, you'll want to hold on and watch the whole video. Let's make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end. All right, guys, here we have the JBL A6000 GTI, first introduced in CES 2003. You can see here, it looks a little different than the model I'm gonna show you. Let's check out the 2004 Car Audio and Electronics directory. This is the first year it actually um, was for sale. You can see this, look at this, $6,000 for the a6000 there's also an a3000 that was the uh, full range version big amplifier huge big money and also 2005 it was in the directory car audio and electronics in the june edition and we'll flip the page open here and check it out again six thousand dollars fifteen hundred by two and eighty one hundred watts at four ohms bridged and the world's largest sub amplifier. And here's a little brochure I got from uh, Gary Biggs. Check out this out. It's got some more information here about the amplifier and the design by Crown. And again, 2600 watts by two at four ohms. So big, big, powerful amplifier. And here we're gonna show the amplifier in its massive size. See it compared to a CD? And then see it compared to Big D, yes. Big, huge, 88 pound amplifier. It's approximately three feet long by two feet wide by about eight inches deep. And again, 88 pounds. And here's a comparison with the Power Acoustic 10K. Looks like a kid amp compared to that. All right, now let's check out the amplifier. On this one side, we'll see the RCA inputs. You also see outputs. Uh, various adjustments for gain, bass, etc. On the other side, we have a big fat warning label. Be careful, risk of electronic shock. Yeah, you'll see why here in a minute, but there's a safety precaution built into this end plate. And I'll show you here when you flip it over. There's a uh, magnet on this panel here that uh, protects you. So what happens is it will not allow the amplifier to power up unless that magnet is in place. Now I was gonna take the amplifier apart for you guys and show you the guts, um, but I got to a little bit further than this point. Took the plexiglass panel off and I cleaned it out a little bit. And then I realized how much work it was gonna be to actually get all the way inside. You can see here, you got screws on the top, on the bottom. There's, I don't know, 20 or more screws to be able to get into the guts. And I know you guys wanted to see the video. You want to see the dyno test. You don't want to see me waste all my time taking this joker apart. But I'll let you look through the, the mesh here and you can see the massive guts, see the neon tubes, the huge transformer there. This joker is just a monster. So let's get this choker hooked up. First, we're gonna plug in the Stinger 6000 series interconnects, give us some really good signal. And also we're gonna use zero gauge pro series wire from Stinger. And for the speaker terminals, actually four gauge, yes, four gauge speaker wire for this amplifier, which is pretty impressive. Now, what you will notice here, get ready for the shock. Are you ready for the shock of your life? Here it goes, boom. Yes, my friends, that's what happens when you have a high-powered amplifier and it immediately charges the caps when you plug it in, it shocks. So here's that panel I was telling you about. Put it in place, snap it in place. 
All right, now I'm gonna be quiet for a couple of seconds so you can hear this joker start up. Look at that. Startup current, 237 amps. All right, so this joker at idle is pulling 12.5 amps at idle. So <laughs> as expected, make sure you got enough juice to feed this beast. All right, I'm sure this is probably going to distort the microphone, but we're going to do it anyway. I'll give you guys a little demo here. Alright, before you guys start complaining about the demo, I don't have speakers that really show this amp off, so just deal with it. That's what we got. Let's move on to the amplifier dyno test. Alright, we did the first round of tests with only one zero gauge input for ground and power. You can see at 4 ohms we got right around 2300 watts and it's rated uh, 1500 watts at 12.5 volts or 2600 at 14.4 so right in between just right where we expect uh, let's now try it at 2 ohms where it's rated 3000 watts per channel look at that 3300 watts at 2 ohms at 12.75 volts very impressive now we knew that we weren't feeding this joker enough current so we decided we we're going to do the split here make some little Y terminals ourselves and go dual zero gauge into single zero gauge and we even wired up all the channels using four gauge the dyno needed to have a little uh, pool noodle action here to hold up the terminals because they were so heavy so here we're going to try the four ohm certified run again check this out almost 2600 watts which is rated at 14.4 volts and if we had 14.4 it would easily do 2600 watts now we'll try two ohm certified where it's rated 3000 watts at 12.5. Look at this, we're over 7,100 7, watts total, 3500 plus 3650, quite impressive. So then we say, let's go up the uncertified. And there again, check this out, 3630 watts. That's 7,323 watts total, whoa. All right, now you know you guys want to see the dynamic run. Check this out. Good Lord have mercy. Over 10,000, almost 11,000 watts. We got 10,843 watts dynamically. Kick butt. Old School Stereo uses only the best accessories provided by Stinger Electronics. Check the video description for links to their social media pages. Try a dynamic burst at 1.6 ohms. Hold on to your hats. Holy guaca freaking moly! Twelve thousand five hundred and fifty-two watts. Well, there you have it, guys. The test of the JBL A6000 GTI. Not sure what's more impressive: the way the amp performed or the way my capacitor bank performed. Uh, this amp tested previously in publications they used massive multiple massive three phase power supplies and we just use maxwell boost caps and we we're able to keep the voltage up pretty well you can see wow i mean pretty impressive numbers we didn't keep it at 14.4 volts but we were not far off we were right around 14 volts at four ohms 
two runs were just a little over 13, but man, check out the 1.6 ohm burst. 12,552 watts, incredible. The A6000 GTI was boasted as being the world's most powerful amplifier back in 2004. That was over 12 years ago. Things have changed and nowadays that's not the most you know, powerful amplifier in the world, but still very impressive feat for the time. Uh, this was just unbelievably expensive amplifier, crown design for JBL, just very impressive. I appreciate you guys watching as always. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment on my videos. Thanks as always for watching. More videos coming soon. Until next time, I'm out of here.